Here I have a very simple circuit consisting of an end channel MOSFET and a resistor between source and ground. Now what do you think happens when I connect the gate to 12 volts? Is it A, the MOSFET turns on and the output voltage is 12? Or is it B, the MOSFET doesn't turn on? Or is it C, something in between? Or D, the MOSFET blows up? Actually, we don't even have to guess. We can just wire it up and see what happens. Here I have the circuit on a breadboard. And as a load, I'm going to use a light bulb. This way we can see visually what's happening to the voltage on it. As a reference, I can attach it directly to the power rails and we can see that it turns on quite brightly. Now we connect the gate to 12 volts and we can see that the light bulb turns on just faintly. And this means that answer C, something in the middle, was correct. Now let's try to understand what's going on and why this is happening. For a MOSFET to be fully on, we need the gate source voltage to be 12 volts, or at least higher than the threshold voltage. Now initially this is the case because I apply 12 volts to the gate and the source is zero, but as the MOSFET turns on, the output voltage, which is also the source voltage, rises to the point where the gate source voltage is just enough to keep the MOSFET slightly on, but not completely on. So this means the output voltage is also somewhere in between 12 and zero volts. At this point it's obvious that we need the voltage on the gate to be higher than 12 volts for the output load to get the full voltage. To achieve this we have different options. There's a very simple circuit that you can find online or you can use an integrated circuit that takes care of the whole thing. Let's first take a look at this very simple circuit that you can find online. It just consists of a diode, a capacitor and a pull-up resistor and then we have another transistor to pull the gate of the main MOSFET down to zero. So when our input is high, the first MOSFET is on, and so this means that the gate of the main MOSFET is zero. So the source is also zero, and the top leg of the capacitor is 12 volts, because the diode can conduct. When our input goes low, the first MOSFET turns off, and this means that the pull-up resistor brings the gate of the main MOSFET to 12, and while this happens, the source also rises, the top leg of the capacitor rises as well and the MOSFET will fully turn on because the capacitor is fully charged and its lower leg can go up to 12 while the top leg is 24. Now let's build the circuit on a breadboard and see if it actually works. Here I built it using two identical MOSFETs just for simplicity and we can see that when I connect the gate of the first one to zero the light bulb turns on completely and when I pull the gate high the output is zero. Now let's look at the output voltage on the oscilloscope. We can see here that it rises quickly, but then it gradually falls. And this is mainly due to the impedance of the oscilloscope probe. But aside from that, we can take this as an indication that we shouldn't use this circuit to permanently turn on the power of a load. Instead, we can use the circuit for fast switching. Now instead, let's probe the gate source voltage and see how that behaves. We can see that it rises pretty slowly. It takes about six microseconds for it to go up completely. Now some of you might be saying that six microseconds is incredibly fast, and that's true in general, but we have to consider that in switch mode power supplies, we can have multiple hundreds of kilohertz as switching frequencies. And if we have the full load on the MOSFET while it's switching, and the switching time is six microseconds, we're gonna burn up an incredible amount of power. As an obvious solution, I tried decreasing the value of the pull-up resistor. From 1 kilo ohm, I went to 100 ohms, and we can see that the time has gone down to about 600 nanoseconds, which is what we were expecting because we decreased the resistance by 10, which means that the time to charge the capacitor should also decrease by a factor of 10. Unfortunately though, for switch mode power supplies, this time is still pretty bad. So I used a 47 ohm resistor this time, which is about half of what we had before. And we can see that the time also got cut in half. Although I can't decrease the resistance any more than this, because it's already heating up quite a bit. So the power that we're saving from quick switching, we're losing on the pull-up resistor. This means that the circuit is not too great when we want high frequency performance devices. We're gonna have to turn to something different. So the next thing I want to do is take a look at this IC because it's made exactly for solving this problem. In fact, it includes two gate drivers for MOSFETs, both capable of giving 4 amps to the gate to charge it super quickly. 
and reduce the switching time. The circuit I'm going to build is the one shown in the data sheet, but I'm going to leave out the parts referred to the low side switch and just go with the high side one. Unfortunately, I had this IC only in a small SMD package, so I came up with this solution to make it a little bit more breadboard friendly. Here you can see that it's working, but the MOSFET only turns on for a brief moment and then turns back off. This is because this IC is made for fast switching and not for keeping the MOSFET on all the time. If we want to increase the time that the switch can stay on, we can put a bigger capacitor like I'm doing here and you see that it improves it a little bit. If you want to put an electrolytic capacitor you can, but remember that they're only good for low frequency applications, so in the case of a switch mode power supply, I would avoid them. Another test that we can do is supply the IC with a square wave and see what happens. We can see that the output appears to stay high, but it's a little bit less bright than it was when we're turning the light bulb on. In fact, this is because the duty cycle is a little bit under 60%, so the brightness is about 60% as well. Okay, well I guess this just about wraps it up. The last thing I want to say is that some people have asked me what the value of all the components I use are, so I'm going to write them all in the description in case you're interested. So drop a like if you think it deserves it, and you can subscribe to not miss any other videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.